go ahead and go on into the Harambe Wildlife Preserve. Now, if you look right above your head, you will see that you have an animal spotting guide. A little sneak preview at some of the animals we'll see out there. Of course, we won't see all of those animals due to their migration patterns and sleeping habits, but we'll try to see as many as we can. Now, keep your cameras out and ready. You can't stop for every single animal, but I'll be able to stop for a few. Now the first stop of our journey, we're about to head on into the Little Aturi. So their natural colors and markings help them to blend in with their surroundings. You really have to look behind trees and bushes to see what you can find out here. Now let's take a look. On this right hand side, we have the Okapi over there. The stripes on its hind legs make it look like a zebra, but don't let those party pants fool you. Okapi are more closely related to the giraffe, the only known living relative of the giraffe. Okapi have a pointed prehensile top lip that allows them to reach high in the trees for leaves, much like how a giraffe does. Now they are very shy and reclusive forest animals, and it's believed that the okapi came first before the giraffe. Let's keep heading down here. I'm starting to see the saddle billed stork coming up on our right hand side up on the hill. This black and white bird on the right hand side. Some saddle billed stork can stand up to five feet tall. They have a seven to nine foot wingspan. And they don't tend to vocalize, instead, they communicate by rattling their bills. And once they find their mate, that's their mate for life. So they are literally together forever. Now up on the hill to the right, I see some bongo in the bushes. Bongo are known as the ghosts of the forest because they are rarely seen. Their horns are tilted backwards, which helps them to get through the thick underbrush of the forest. Bongo, they weigh in at about 500 to 900 pounds. Up to the left, you can see the black rhino. You see it sleeping, it looks like a big rock. It's kind of muddy. Black rhinos, they have no natural predators. Their only threat is humans they are hunted for their keratin horn. Now keratin is the same material as our fingernails and hair, so it poses no benefits for us to hunt them. Sadly, they are nearing extinction. There are less than 5,000 black rhino left in the world. But we're gonna leave the forest now and start to make our way on down by the Safi River. Start to keep your eyes peeled for animals that like to be by the water, near the water, or even underwater. Sometimes you can find a Nile hippo out here. We'll take a look. However, Nile hippo, they can be fully submerged underwater for eight minutes at a time before coming up for their next breath of air. Oh, down to the right. He's getting out of the water. <laughs> we'll try to look for some more. Also down to the right, you'll see some white birds there. Those are the pink back pelicans because their backs will turn pink during mating season, almost like they're blushing. Like the saddle billed stork, they too have a seven to nine foot wingspan and they're one of the only pelican species that nest in trees. Now let's see if we can find some more Nile hippo. All these vultures are flying low. <laughs> Nile hippo, they can swim up to 15 miles per hour underneath the water. However, they prefer to walk or run at the bottom of the river. I think I can see some further down to the left over there. They're born at 85 pounds, and then they get all the way up to be about 3,000 to 4,000 pounds on average. And they can eat quite a bit. They eat about 80 to 90 pounds of vegetation or food every single day. Now we're going to head across a bridge over here. Reminder to stay fully seated for me because we got some Nile crocodile over to the left there. Cocodrilo, cocodrilo. Nile crocodile. They can get up to 18, sometimes even 20 feet in length. So they can be as long as a giraffe is tall. They average 500 to 600 pounds each. They have been known to eat anything that crosses their path, but they are really good parents, Nile Crocodile. Sometimes they'll hold their baby's eggs in their mouth to help keep them really warm before they hatch. Often they'll even poke a hole in the baby's eggs with their teeth, which helps them to hatch a lot easier. 
And if you saw one or two of them with their mouth wide open, which looks pretty scary, but that's actually just how they keep nice and cool. The warm air will escape while the cooler air flows right on in. Now start looking over to the right hand side because we're passing by the baobab tree. The baobab tree is the formal name for the tree of life. Some also call it the upside down tree because it looks like its roots are way up top. Those baobab tree remain leafless nine months out of the year. Now on to the savanna we go, the next stop of our journey. Savannah is home to Africa's most popular animals like giraffe, zebra, elephants, and wildebeest. Don't forget about your animal spotting guide you can use to point out these animals as easily as I can. The savanna is the largest part of the Harambe Wildlife Preserve. It stretches miles and miles, so animals have lots of room to roam around, and that they certainly do. I think I already see a Maasai giraffe way over to the far, far right in the distance, and a zebra too. We're going to loop around there, but maybe that's where all the animals are hiding out. All throughout the savanna, you'll notice these termite mounds kind of scattered around. Termite mounds are made out of dirt, saliva, and dung, and they actually harden in the sun. They can get as hard as concrete out here. So animals will use them as a defense mechanism, kind of hiding behind them, using them as a shield if they feel like they need protection. Down to the left, we're looking for African wild dogs. You see them? Oh, there's some in the den there. African wild dogs are the most successful hunters in Africa. Traveling in packs of five to 15 dogs at once. Now the dominant male and the dominant female then become the primary breeding pair of the pack. Now also known as the painted dogs because it looks like their coats have been finger painted, but not to be confused with hyenas, although they look the same, over to the left, hard to see, they're way towards the back. Those are sable antelope hiding back there. Sable antelope, you might be able to see them a little bit over your left shoulder if you look. Sable antelope, they are the official emblem of the Harambe Wildlife Preserve. So they are very popular around here. They're kind of hanging out back there in the shade. Now we're gonna head on over to the farther side of the savanna where I saw the Maasai giraffe and the Hartman's Mountain zebra as well. Now some of these termite mounds, they can get pretty tall, as you can see, they can get pretty large. The larger animals, like elephants, will use termite mounds as a scratching post. Oh, there's some actually some wildebeest over to the right, kind of, as you can see as we round this corner, some tucked away over to the right there. We'll see them again on the other side of this tree. See those wildebeest over there. Wildebeest means wild beast in Afrikaans. And wildebeest, they can travel in large numbers. So their largest migration recorded was about one and a half million wildebeest traveling together at the same time. Some have said that was seen from the space station. A herd of wildebeest is called a confusion. So they all look just alike and they have stripes. Now further up ahead this way, wow, I'm seeing lots of different animals. Maasai giraffe, zebra, I also see springbok and Ancoli cattle too. So I'm gonna have to talk quick. Over to the right, you'll start to see the springbok. Little tiny antelopes that look like s'mores. See, they have white underneath, tan on top, dark brown in the middle. They can spring up six feet straight up in the air, 13 feet moving outwards, reaching speeds of 50 miles per hour. During their mating season, they emit a pheromone that makes them smell like cotton candy. In the middle of all those palm trees in the center, you may see some tall horns peeking up. Those belong to the Ancoli cattle. Ancoli cattle, they're part of the bovine family, so similar to buffalo and bison. Now passing by Maasai giraffe, of course, the Maasai giraffe, named after the Maasai tribe, they stand at 18 to 20 feet tall. That means whenever they're born, the babies have about a six foot drop to the ground from mom. So they get burst standing up, they eat standing up, and they sleep standing up as well. They eat for 20 hours out of the day, while only sleeping for 30 minutes out of the day. 
If you notice, their spots are kind of rough around the edges with no definitive pattern. So their patterns are unique to all of them, kind of like how our fingerprints are unique to all of us. They have the same amount of vertebrae in their neck as we do, which is seven. Theirs just happen to be a little bit bigger than ours. And a herd of giraffe is called a tower. Over to the right, you may see those Hartman's Mountain Zebra. They have a little flap of skin underneath their neck that's called a dewlap that helps them to regulate their body temperature and keep nice and cool. A herd of zebra is called a dazzle. They can travel long distances, about 300 miles at a time during their annual migration. What the giraffe and zebra have in common is that they both have a very powerful kick. So their kick is so powerful they can defend themselves from even the most of fierce predators. Now we're starting to make our way over towards elephant country to see if we can get lucky enough to catch a glimpse of an African elephant out here. Oh, you see? <laughs> if you see anything over to the left, that would be a mandrel. The same monkey as Rafiki from the Lion King. Oh, in the water. <laughs> Elephants love the water, as they can get pretty, pretty hot out here, of course. Now another way besides the water that they keep themselves cool is by flapping their ears around. That helps them to keep nice and cool. So by flapping their ears around, they can change their body temperature by about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Sadly, they're poached for their ivory tusk. I'm not sure if you saw those long white things right around its mouth area. Oh, we're going to head deeper towards elephant country, see if we can catch another glimpse of more African elephants out here. We may see the entire herd. Once the females reach adulthood, they weigh in at 7,000 pounds, and males double that at 14,000 pounds. Now, while they use their ears to keep them nice and cool, they also use their ears as a defense mechanism by holding them out really wide, which makes themselves appear much larger than they actually are, which helps to deter any predators. Now, at the end of this bridge here, we're going to pass through some red clay, which is what elephants like to eat to gain minerals. So it's kind of the equivalent to us taking a multivitamin. Now, sometimes their tusks will scratch up against the sides of the red clay while they're eating at it, leaving behind some tusk marks. So if you happen to see any tusk marks, then you'll know that an African elephant was near. All along this red clay. Oh, there's some down to the left there. Oh, quite a few on the right-hand side there. Whole lot of tusk marks. I think I see another African elephant way off in the far distance to the left. A couple more. They're kind of hanging out in the shade towards the back. They have very sensitive skin, so on the warmer days like today, they will be seen putting dirt, mud, and of course water all over their skin, which it kind of acts as their own natural sunscreen. Their skin is about two and a half centimeters thick in most places, but still very, very sensitive. Fun fact, these elephants are very afraid of bees, so farmers in Africa will put beehives all over their crops and gardens, which helps to pollinate the crops and gardens, but it also helps to prevent the elephants from trampling all over them and destroying them. And you'll notice some more baobab trees all around us, the tree of life. Because these baobab trees are made leafless, nine months out of the year, they conserve lots and lots of water. So elephants will tend to put their trunks up towards the base of the baobab trees and kind of drink the excess water that's coming up from the roots. An African elephant can hold about two and a half gallons of water in their trunks at a time. See a couple more over to the left there. And as we are looping around the corner here, we have made it up to the private island of the Greater Flamingo. These just so happen to be the lightest shade pink of all of Flamingo. Whenever they're born, they're hatched a kind of grayish white color. Then it takes them about two years to develop their pink color, which they get from their diets. So they eat lots of tiny brine shrimp, and that tiny brine shrimp is full of something called beta carotene. So the beta carotene is the component that makes their feathers turn pink. They average about four to eight pounds each, and a group of flamingo all together like that is called a flamboyance. 
If you ever see really bright pink flamingo, there's a chance that those could be the lesser flamingo, as lesser flamingo have a much more vibrant pink color than the greater flamingo do. Another larger elephant way over there to the left. And we'll see what we can find over on this far side of the savannah. See some fresh mud there to the left. Maybe that's a sign that we'll see a rhino. Rhinos like to roll around in the mud pretty often because it kind of protects their skin as well, kind of like their own natural sunscreen, just like elephants. Gotta look high and low. Maybe we'll spot some big cats around here. Oh, I think I see a rhino up to the right in the bushes, sleeping up there, way up there to the right in the bushes. <laughs> Now we'll loop around. There's a little bit of an opening up there once we loop around. Oh, look up to the left. If you look towards the back, you can see some cheetahs. Yes. Cheetahs are the fastest land animals, reaching speeds of about 70 miles per hour in just three seconds. See two way towards the back. Now here's a little opening. You might be able to see those white rhinos up there to the right. A couple of them up there. They average about 4,000 pounds. A herd of rhino is called a crash because they can only see about 10 feet in front of them. So sometimes they'll crash into other things or, oh, up to the right, those are water buck. <laughs> Animals all around water buck. They get their name because they like to hang out by the water a lot. Their predators, such as lions, don't like the water, so they use it as a defense mechanism. Two more cheetahs up there in that corner. <laughs> Yeah. So the, the black tear marks, as I was saying, they have those black tear marks right around the inner corners of their eyes that help to protect them from the glare of the sun. So kind of act as their own personal sunglasses. Cheetahs have about 2,000 spots that cover their body. So they disguise themselves very, very well. Now let's loop around these Kobe rocks, see if we can find anything else. Oh, the water bunker making their way down here. If we drive by them, we might be able to see their kind of shaggy greasy coat that they have you see they have a white ring right around their backside oh now even more another uh, white rhino a couple more over to the far right also do see an ostrich if you look at the, the passenger side by that green truck over there you may see an ostrich standing next to it <laughs> now, let's see what else we can find if we can find anything else we're gonna loop around there now nothing else up on these Gobi rocks we'll keep trucking along I think I see something way towards <laughs> down there yeah, I think I see a little bit of the male lion's mane if you look way down there. Hard to see. <laughs> lions, they do sleep or rest about 16 to 20 hours out of the day. So they are always kind of resting somewhere in the shade on these hot days. A lion's roar can be heard up to five miles away. And the Swahili word for lion is Simba. And a group of lions all together is called a pride. Now, don't think we'll find anything down to the left. Sometimes you can find the warthogs, but they've really been hiding out in the burrows on these warmer days. Hard to find. Now, more of those white rhino you see over to the right there. There's actually no difference in color between a black rhino and a white rhino. The difference is their mouth shape. <laughs> I think they're kind of scared of the water buck. <laughs> now rhinos, they can charge up to about 35, 45 miles per hour. <laughs> now if we take a look, oh, down to the right, see some eggs on the ground there. Those are ostrich eggs. Ostrich eggs weigh in at about three to four pounds each, equivalent to two dozen chicken eggs. And they're very strong eggs. They say the average person can stand right on top of one and it would not break. 
That is how strong that ostrich egg is. Of course, ostrich can't fly, but they can run up to about 43 miles per hour. Once they reach adulthood, they average about 200 to 250 pounds. Now we are making our way down to the warden's post, the final stretch of our journey. Down by the warden's post is where the Nigerian dwarf goats like to hang out. So let's see what they're up to. They're probably gonna be resting in the shade. Oh, and that they are. <laughs> they are so cute. Their milk is seen the And a lot of the times they'll play around together by hopping on each other's backs or headbutting each other. But that's just how they mature and assert dominance over one another. And they are one of two domesticated animals out here on the reserve. So it's the Nigerian dwarf goats in addition to the Ankoli cattle. With those big tall horns that we just barely saw back there on the savannah. Now sadly my friends, our journey on the Harambe Wildlife Reserve has just about come to an end. But if you want to see some more close-up animal encounters, make your way over to the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail to see some silverback gorilla, meerkats, naked mole rats, an underwater viewing area for hippo, and over 50 different species of birds. They also have more okapi over there and more zebra over there if you want to see. A different type of zebra that's called the grevy zebra, a little bit of a larger type of zebra than the Hartman's Mountain zebra. Now that is a self-guided trail, fully accessible. You can take strollers, ECVs, and wheelchairs. And the best thing about the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail is that it's right where I'm going to drop you all off at, where I picked you up at. So if you head down the exit ramp, if you turn left, then you'll be right onto the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. And if you turn right at the end of the exit ramp, then you'll be headed back towards the middle of the village, back towards the front of the park. There you go. Now, normally this is where everyone gets off, but I'm gonna take you all back up to the dock that I picked you up at. So we're just gonna bypass all of these other trucks here as soon as we can. Now, if you all are gonna make a trip over to Asia today, make sure to check out our sister trail, which is the Maharaja Jungle Trek.